Hey everybody, Ben here for the Bono Podcast and welcome to Lizardmen Setups. So we are going to have a look at every team in Blood Bowl, whether it's from the rulebook, Teams of Legend PDF or the expanded teams from the NAF. And we're going to try and beat Games Workshop to releasing another team or another big change. And we're looking at setups. Okay, so when you're starting out with Blood Bowl, how, how you deploy your people basically dictates a bunch of turns. If your opponent is, if you are lucky and your opponent wants a quick touchdown, it could only cost you a couple of turns. If you are playing against a grindy opponent, setting up wrong can lose the game for you. So we've had a look at offensive setups and defensive setups, just generic ones that work for a lot of teams. And today we're going to take a bit of a deep dive into the specifics of Lizardmen. So defense wins championships, as they've always said. And uh, in Blood Bowl, being able to turn over the ball is a massive, massive skill. So when you're playing Blood Bowl, when you're learning Blood Bowl, when you are mastering Blood Bowl, defense is probably the most important. We have had a look at the 2-1 grind. We will be having a look at the 2-1 grind. I'm not sure on the schedule. Um, but you will know, regardless from playing Blood Bowl, I'm sure, that actually if you can break the serve just one time, it will potentially win you the game. So when you're looking at defense, you really have to play to your, steam, your team's strengths. And this team has a ton of strength. Literally, a ton of strength. So we are looking at the Lizards, and the Lizardmen have got blockers. So if, just from a quick key point of view, you've got K for Croxagore, B for Saurus blockers, and uh, you've got S for Skinks, and C for Chameleon Skinks. So they've got a ton of great positionals. In fact, the team is made entirely of really good positionals. We are going to assume that you've got the full lineup here, but what we'll do is, we've, I think we've got five different setups we'll adjust for if you don't have a player. So the starting uh, rosters for Crocs, for, for the Lizards, you kind of you can go all in I think but it costs you on re-rolls so you end up potentially having only six of your seven bruisers to start with so we'll, we'll, we'll look at the strong front with everything and then we'll make a quick, a quick adjustment so the strong front 5-4-2 5 on the line 4 as your secondary and then 2 as your kind of safeties your reserve players now when it comes to the reserve your catchers here your catchers classic your comedian skinks they've got movement 7 okay so 1 2 Three, four, five, six, seven. They can cover the whole backfield between them. You've always got the fact that they are strength two. So your kind of safeties here are strength two. So if somebody breaks out into the backfield, if they push through a blocker here and they get here, you are going to have difficulties getting a good block against them. However, because of the movement of the skinks here, you should be able to gang up and at least stall out. But that's why these blockers are such good positionals. Strength four with movement six yes they're going to get tied up and that's okay but you've got a really good defense anyway the strong front is best used against a team that is significantly weaker than you okay you've got the crocs who strength five they can take on big guys and you've got blockers who are strength four so this can be almost any team you don't always have to deploy heavy and this is way more than we would normally recommend putting on the line because it gives your opponent the opportunity at more, more blocks but when you are deploying with Lizards, if you're playing against a majority strength 3 team, you can consider doing this. If you want to play dominant, you want to play strong, you're playing against uh, Skaven, uh, humans potentially, you can force them to make bad blocks. So each one of these blockers, if they want to get a good block, they'll need two assists there and he'll have to block out, which means he's going to have to be tagged as well. So they are going to have to do a load of work to fold your line and to get two die blocks against a strength four player if you're strength three you need two assists so that's three to one they can go heavy on one side sure but they're going to need three players to take out a blocker here and then where are they going to go sure they can blitz into a skink at that point if they break through the but then they're going to leave this blocker here unta unattached and these three guys in the backfield unattached so you are allowing your opponent to have a lot of blocks but the strength of this setup and why you should consider this if you are a Lizardman team is they're not going to be able to take it. Okay, if they're playing Skaven, if they're playing Elves, what they're going to do is they're going to fall back. And then you've got this huge amount of strength on the front line. And if they get it wrong, if something goes wrong, you have got a ton of massive amount of strength here. Most teams are going to disengage and you deploy this way. You allow them to deploy heavy one side break through and then you can swoop this in and just collapse in on their line 
But if you're playing in a game against somebody else who knows how to play and they've got some serious strength, the Crocs box may be something uh, to consider. So very similar setup to the Anchor. I think we called it the Deep Anchor when we did the generics ones. And the same thing applies. You just have inherent strength in the fact that your front line is made of three strength four players. So you've got your front line. You've got those three blockers. If your opponent is of uh, lesser or equal strength than you, they are still going to need to deploy additional strength. The downside here is if you're using this deployment, it's potentially because your opponent is dwarves, is ogres, is, um, you know, to be fair, black orcs have probably got a slight edge when it comes to strength on the line. So you can muscle up with the strong front, okay, with the last one, deploy five guys and make them deploy seven to beat you make the majority of their line match up against yours or you can just give them the front line and to do that you put these three blockers on there that's strength four strength four strength four even if they're going toe to toe they're going to need to deploy four five guys to even get some good blocks realistically they're going to need five or six guys to make multiple good blocks here that's a huge amount of their team and it can go wrong and they do have to deploy that resource there because these are not regular players they are strength four and then so they will ignore that they've, they've conquered your front line and you've allowed it to happen you've got strength four armor 10 plus players on there that's okay they're going to survive a bit of a punching that's what makes them great blockers even better when they've got block um then they've got your secondary, okay? And this is where this comes in really, really, really brilliantly. If your opponent is gonna blitz, they are going to be blitzing one of your strength four blockers here. Again, even if they are a strength four team, Black Orcs, they're gonna to have to expend their movement and they are gonna need an assistant. They're gonna need assists. If they are not a strength four team and you're going for this way, say you're playing against a mid-range team, uh, humans is a cracking example, deploy like this let them expend their resources on the front line to take you out if they've got a big guy potentially you can swap the crocs into the middle and if your crocs has got guard then actually you can bunch these guys up and get even even more strength if you've got guard the heavy deployment bunch them together works great anyway let's say they take out your front line they go for a blitz on a corner they take out a blocker because they've put a bunch of guys here if you think if you're playing against strength three they are going to need to tag up this player here put an assist there, put an assist there, and then blitz into here. You've got two guys in the way there, like that's absolutely fine. They can take that block, that's three players gone, they've had to use several players here. They don't have much of a team left. They'll probably try and tag this Saurus here. And that's really good for you, because if they don't wipe out your line, you've probably got a good block or two there. If they don't take out this guy, they've got a good block there. Basically, if they tag either side of your anchor, you are going to start the next turn with an easy two die block that is just free. Now remember, free blocks are never free blocks. You're always going to roll those double skulls and it's always going to wreck you. But once you've redeployed your team, free blocks are going to hurt them much more than they're going to hurt you. Because you're strength four and you're armor ten. So that's your kind of Saurus group. You've got the Croxagore in the middle of the Crox box. And basically you can just use them to maneuver anywhere you like. Movement what? Movement 6 on a strength 5 mighty blow piece means that he is fantastic. And yes, I know, blitzing with a bonehead piece is a very bad idea. But if you develop him up, if he's got guard, you can just redeploy this Croxagore to wherever they go. So if your opponent deploys heavy this side and starts moving this way, get the Crocs involved. Bring the blocker in. Bring this blocker in. And then you've got a bunch of skinks. Now the great thing about the skinks, especially on defense, is this is movement 8 and these guys are movement 7. You may not have two chameleons, which means this is movement 8 as well. That's really good. So your range there is um, basically everything in the world, including this bit here. So your, your skinks can move anywhere you want them to go and support anyone you want them to support. So, strong front line here. Great secondary with some pretty chunky linebackers. The blocker's going to take a punch pretty well. This one's going to get a free block. And your Croxagore can redeploy wherever you want him, including just going for a jolly good blitz. If all your Sauruses, Saurai, are engaged, you might as well go for the blitz on the Crocs because all that's going to do is potentially unlock another Saurus to then redeploy and start pressuring your opponent. But your secret weapon is this Saurus here. So I deploy it on the sweet spot. And uh, movement six is what? That's uh, one, two, three four, five, six squares, and then up here. So this Saurus is going and one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, 
this Saurus has got the pitch basically covered. Okay, at that point. So wherever, it, whenever, if your opponent manages to dominate your front line, which is going to take some work, and then puts you in a difficult position by beating a blocker on the edge, you've got your crocs to counter, and you've got a deep safety here, a strong deep safety, with movement six, and then they can be supported by skinks. So if your opponent does just sandwich you in, create a little, um, sort of like a little beachhead on the side, skink tag, chameleon skink tag, other chameleon skink tag, maybe you just redeploy your croxagor and then you blitz with your source because two die blitz is always going to be great ball pops out you've got a bunch of really high movement stuff the crox box gives you a great platform think about playing against this what are you going to do you can push some guys away from the line and give yourself some space wherever you go this massive stampede of jurassic nightmares is just going to come and wreck your day now i like the strong front against agile teams but if you think about the setup, there is a opportunity that they can break through and they can leave most of your players tagged. So you can use the uh, soft center that we looked at in the generic setups and it's going to do very much a very similar thing, but it's going to allow you to have a bunch of resources in defense. So if you are playing against agility, Skaven, Wood Elves, Pro Elves, stuff like that, light teams, blocker, Croxagore and a blocker on the main line is going to give your opponent a pretty tough time. What they'll do then is they'll stack heavy probably like this. All right, one, two, three players. If they want to actually take a block, they might go one, two, three, four, take the block there, free up these guys to come down here. But when you're deploying wide like this, your vulnerability is here. Okay, they have to come through the middle or to the edge of that skink. That is really good for you. If they want to move here, they will get a good block. Okay, what you can do if you're not playing against Frenzy is swap these positionals round. Um, we don't like to, we like to default against Frenzy because it's better to um, deploy versus Frenzy and then not come against it than it is to forget that they got Frenzy, put your blocker here and then end up with him off the pitch because even though armor 11, or armor 10 is great, um, the crowd doesn't care about your armor. So in this situation, they are going to get a two die blitz against a skink. Skinks have got dodge, and to be quite honest with you, they are replaceable. If they want to burst through, that's fine. The furthest they're going to get is here. Let's say they murder this skink, and tag this blocker, and tag these guys. You've got a blocker here who's going to come in and have a very good blitz. You've got a catcher here, a, a skink, who's a chameleon, and a skink who are going to be able to sandwich that line again. And because of the insane movement of this team, you are going to end up being able to clog this line, cut off their beachhead, and then just pile in your players. Be careful not to give them good blitzes out against your strength two players, but you are going to be able to move a ton of players into position to counter that. So you allow them to choose where they want to go and then you punch them. So the soft center and to be honest with you, the crocs box is both, both of those are just going to allow your opponent to make the first move. But the great thing is with the Lizardman team is you've got six or seven players that you don't mind getting punched because it's going to take a lot of work for that to work. And the last thing I wanted to show with the Lizardman team is because you've got all that high strength, they do make a really solid column defense. So the column defense is there to slow down cage teams, to uh, slow down anybody. If you look at here, you've got double layer of tackle zones everywhere in that point, and they have to come through the crocs. If they break through the crocs here, which is going to take some work, it's going to take some serious work, they're going to have to counter punch with another big guy, so you've got a kaiju kaiju situation in the middle here. They break through, they are then going to have to tag all of these guys here, and then all you have to do is swarm with your stunty dodge guys, your strength is going to be down. If they haven't managed to secure all seven of your high strength players, you end up basically hammer and anviling them. On top of that, once you've sandwiched the line, and remember, if they go for a breakthrough, tag them. If you get a good blitz, go for it. But otherwise, tag them, make them roll the dice. If they have marked, sorry, all of your blitz, all of your blockers here, if they've marked them all so they can't go blitzing, secure that ball with using your four uh, third level players and then just beat the heck out of them because you're going to get two dice here, two dice here, two dice here, two dice here and you don't have to go for a blitz. What you can do is take a good blitz here on a two dice, push the opponent away and then maneuver your bl uh, your blocker into that ball security as well. If they're going to go for a quick score, it's going to be very tough 
for them to secure it because they cannot secure these players here without getting a really strong blitz on one of your strength four players and that's just not going to happen without them putting a ton of resource in there and getting really lucky and if it does the movement of the skinks they just don't care but we're here to score touchdowns so if you need to score a touchdown with the lizardman team you're going to be absolutely fine so 542 offense is probably the go-to i would say when it comes to lizards you get five guys on the line so we did say if you don't have a crocs what do you do honestly with this situation if you don't have the crocs you drop this skink back to i don't know here probably or here and then it gives them an absolute ton of movement to move and secure but with this one you've got your two chameleons or general skinks in the back i love chameleons for this purpose and if you've got one chameleon i don't know maybe go there and there with the chameleon in the back to get that extra three squares of movement on the kick that's on the ball that's what it does that's why i love the skill in this situation with two skinks uh, with two chameleons uh let's see one two three one two uh, one, two, three. Yeah, you've got this amount of space as free movement. So if you want to put one chameleon there and bunch another guy up there, then you've got basically movement 10 on your chameleon. So you should be able to secure the ball. But because you've got that O-line, because you've got all that strength, you don't need to hurry with the skink offense. Because they've got that movement, because they've got great movement, and even with uh, on the ball they've got even better movement, it's going to be a good work from your opponent to break through and harass your ball. Anyway, let's start at the beginning. Five guys on the line. Four if you don't have the crocs, sure. That's a lot of really good blocks. Ball lands, wherever the ball lands, you move up to secure. You can bring a skink back to secure. You can even bring Saurus blocker here to secure. And then you pick it up. So what you end up with is a free floating player on one side. If you're happy with the ball, if it lands down here and you can bring these guys across, you don't even need to bring that skink back. You can secure it with three and then you've got these blockers that can just go and deploy. And then you've got your front line. Crocs goes smash, blocker goes block, freeze this guy up, blocker goes block, freeze this guy up. And then you can fold back, create a cage, just bring your guys up to create a cage and that's the beautiful thing about the 542 and having these blockers on the wing here um, you can always drop them back a square just in case of um, um, do -do 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 -do. no that's fine um, your offense this is okay you <sighs> smash away smash away smash away you've got three guys there blocker goes there blocker goes there chameleon skin catches the ball you've got a cage immediately and it's a mighty cage if you've got six or seven strength four players all you have to do is smash face and move the ball up and eventually you're going to have a movement seven stunty or movement eight stunty player with dodge that's going to be able to just run through whatever hole you build for them and all the time you're doing that you are dominating by throwing two or three die blocks with your heavy hitters it's an absolute nightmare and the thing is there's nothing clever about this you can deploy like this and it will allow you to do whatever it is you want because you will be able to free up a couple of these blockers whichever ones you want and then you'll have four strength four movement six pieces to back up your four movement seven or eight pieces as well but if your opponent has chosen to go toe to toe with you okay you're playing black orcs you're playing dwarves you're playing a heavy human team something mid-range to, to heavy and they've deployed stronger on the line than you would expect okay most of these deployments are assuming they're going to deploy three sacrificial lambs and then go for a heavy secondary if they want to square up to you and deploy five deep on the line square up back you have got in the seven four four players in the back these are movement eight players or movement 10 with on the ball so they've got a ton of range you will be able to secure that ball and deploying so heavily on the line is going to give you so many great blocks now it is always risky so actually the other setup is probably better because you don't have to in you don't have to engage with two of these blockers um, but if your opponent sets up and you're in a really strong position there is nothing wrong with just whacking your meat on the line and just going to town on your opponent because you can destroy them and you've got four great agility players in the backfield now with skate with skaven with the skink team with lizardman you don't have to score quickly because you are under no pressure not really it's going to cost your opponent to go after your ball carriers so don't rush take three four turns at least and just dominate the line and if they deploy in such a position where actually they give you free blocks it might not be a terrible thing to take it because 
you've got such a great team to secure the ball. If you deploy it south of the um, the sweet spot, they're going to have to go an absolute mile to threaten you. And you've got so much movement, you can be able to swing up here in turn two. Once you've destroyed their line, cage up in the middle, and then the game is yours. But there may be some times where you need to score quickly, and even though Lizardmen have six or seven high strength, high armor players, you can still do that as well, because these guys are movement eight. So we're not going to look at the one turn touchdown setup for Lizardmen, it's actually very similar to the Skaven one. So if you want to know about that now, go watch the Skaven one turn touchdown, there is an extra step, or wait a couple of weeks for us to do the Lizardman one. I just realized the graphics squiffy sad right so you can deploy heavy flank offense here merrily with lizards crocs and three blocks on the line two blockers there just to support blocker wide as a kind of free ranging protector both your chameleons or just high movement skinks in the backfield and then two on the line here how this works is ball lands here this chameleon grabs it brings it over gives it to this guy this guy brings it up gives it to one of these guys ball lands here this guy brings it up comes up and does that this guy swings here brings it up does that no problem at all you've got this blocker who's got six squares of movement so that's one two three four five six squares so he's going anywhere there to protect and you've got this blocker here he's doing a very similar thing one two three four five six he's covering that space you can secure the ball, but your goal here is to score quickly in two turns, and there is where you're going to have some clever blocks. So basically, Crox blocks a guy away, Blocker blocks a guy away, it frees up this entire contingent of strength four movement six pieces. Now if your opponent deploys heavy on the line, it's going to take a couple more blocks, but if you look at this, what you can then do is blitz with uh, one of the blockers, any one of the blockers, and then form a really good launch pad. Now a launch pad is a kind of side cage or a strong cage or a screen that is about uh, four, five squares into your opponent's half. Basically, as soon as you can put somebody on a launch pad ready to run next turn in for a touchdown, that's what you've achieved. And with this offense, you can get there really, really, really quickly. Now, the alternative to this is to put this to be blockers and then these to be skinks. So you can just deploy massive strength up there. You've got the movement there with the skinks to swoop in. It doesn't matter. It depends. I like having extra movement on my fast guys, but actually, hey, it's up to you. The whole point here is that this guy can protect the ball anywhere here. Your catchers, sorry, your chameleons should be able to grab it and get it to one of your scorers here. And whether they're here or here, you're going to have a huge amount of range to just go and do a side cage, get ready to score on turn two. So when it comes to Lizardmen, you're actually using very normal deployments. So don't be confused. Don't be overwhelmed by the fact that only four of your guys um, have any hands at all, basically. You don't need them, okay? From an offense point of view or a defense point of view, you need heavy hitters. That's why the Lizardman team is so good. If you don't have a Croxagore, you just end up with one more skink. You've still got probably six strength four players. And whether you are up against a tough team or a fragile team, you can adjust brilliantly. If you're up against a stronger team than you, actually you get to stagger and counter strike. If you're up against a weaker team than you, you can put the pressure on immediately, going five wide on that line, denying your opponent the opportunity to go anywhere and then just pouncing on them. Lizardmen got even better in series two, in season two, in Blood Bowl 2020. The Lizardman team is fantastic. So if you're starting out with Blood Bowl, this is a great place to be. If you're playing against Lizards, hopefully watching some of these setups, you can kind of spot some of the vulnerabilities. But to be honest with you guys, there isn't many. The only thing you can really hope to do is take out their skinks. And as you've seen from all these setups, because we're trying to help here, they're very difficult to get to. So good luck with that. Anyway, guys, going to wrap up the video now. Thank you ever so much for watching. We'll be back soon with more Blood Bowl content. Happy blocking. Thanks very much for watching. We really appreciate your support. If you want to support the show even further, please like and subscribe. It really helps us out. Or come and join us in our Patreon uh, link below where you get early access to our content and monthly competitions. See you later.